In case you've been living under a rock, motorcycles have some amazing engines. Relative to how much they cost, no other motorized vehicle comes with such sky-high RPMs, attention to precision, or purity. Most of us are familiar with the tried-and-true four-cylinder variants from the big four from Japan, your Hondas, Suzuki's, Yamaha, and Kawasaki's. Or maybe the workhorse parallel twins that can be found in most beginner bikes, like the Ninja 400 or the Yamaha R3. And while those are real feats of engineering, there are some rare and unbelievable motorcycle engines that must be seen and both heard to truly appreciate. And you've come to the right place in order to check them out. I am your host, the illustrious and immortal shammy dude, clammy cube, yammy noob, your shepherd guiding you through the world of two wheels. And today we are checking out seven of the most unbelievable motorcycle engines. We've got five cylinders, no cylinders, and bikes that are known as widow makers. Scary stuff, but exciting nonetheless. Before we jump into checking out these amazing machines, be sure to like this video and subscribe to be notified of future posts. We're doing big things here at Yami Noob, like giving away free motorcycles, and you should definitely be a part of it. Now let's get into it. Our first entry is truly one of a kind, and a bike you'll probably never see in the wild. Number one, the Suzuki RE5. We're starting this video outright. Truly one of the weirdest and most unbelievable motorcycle engines, the Suzuki RE5 was produced from 1974 to 1976 for only two short years. Years. It came equipped with the 497cc Wankel, or rotary-powered engine. It claimed to produce about 62 horsepower, but reviewers at the time found it to be lacking relative to those figures. In case you're unfamiliar with it, a rotary engine is fundamentally different than a traditional internal combustion engine in that they utilize a small rotating Dorito-shaped rotor that spins in one direction to compress and combust the mixture of air and fuel. If you're familiar with the RX-7 or the RX-8 sports cars from Mazda, they use a rotary engine, which is why they sound like a swarm of angry bees. Take a listen. <laughs> Now, rotaries are known for their silky smoothness and high RPM limits, which make them a natural contender for motorcycles. However, because they never received the love and attention of piston engines, i.e. the years and years of independent R&D from literally dozens of manufacturers, it made them pretty unreliable. If you're familiar with rotaries, you know that the one thing people always mention are the apex seals, which are the seals that are on the end of those flying Doritos I mentioned earlier. The Suzuki RE5 was touted as the future of motorcycles at one point. Many folks folks thought that rotary engines were going to be the way that motorcycles would make power in the future. And while all four major manufacturers from Japan had plans to make a rotary powered bike, only Suzuki actually did it. So what did this engine sound like? Let's take a listen. For as ingenious and overcomplicated as it was, it did sound like a weed whacker, which is a shame. It's not really a sound I'd be super interested in. Reviewers at the time also panned this bike for being a bit self-indulgent and needlessly complicated, but bikes like this are what makes motorcycling interesting, and people need to push the envelope to advance it. Suzuki was so concerned about the bike's reliability that it offered an unprecedented 12-month full engine replacement warranty for anyone who bought one new. Seriously, can you imagine a warranty that bulletproof today? Our next contender is one you can't buy, but it still deserves to be mentioned. Number two, the Honda RC211V. The RC211V is a legendary motorcycle. It's a MotoGP-specific bike produced between 2002 and 2006 and designed for Valentino Rossi to ride. Seriously, Rossi rode this bike in 2002 and 2003, and that's not even the most special thing about it. It came equipped with a V5 engine. That's right, a V5. So you had two cylinders going one way and three going the other, giving it an absolutely wonderful throaty bark that sounds really different than any other four cylinder bike. Take a listen. <laughs> Now this was at a really interesting time for MotoGP as manufacturers were moving away from the 500cc two-stroke monsters of day past and they were experimenting with four-stroke offerings. Race regulations indicated that they were allowed to have between three to six cylinders as long as it was under 990 cc's. And this bike was an 
absolute monster. In its 2004 iteration, it produced over 240 brake horsepower, which is a mind-boggling amount of power. It's also important to note that it was basically uncontested while Rossi rode it in 2002 and 2003. For example, in 2002, the debut year of the RC211V, Honda and Rossi dominated by more than 100 points over their nearest rival. The bike underwent small modifications over the season, and it didn't have traction control so much as a handlebar-mounted power management system with three settings for different knees during a race. Let that sink in. This is when men were men, and they grabbed a motorcycle with well over 200 horsepower by the scruff of the neck with no traction control. That's absolutely unreal. The Honda V5 is going to go down in history as one of the most unbelievable motorcycle engines ever produced. No doubt about it. Our next engine is one that you can actually buy, and one that I would absolutely love to own. Number three, the Honda CBX. If you've ever wondered what peak motorcycling sounds like, this is it. The Honda CBX was a bike produced from 1978 to 1982, only four short years, and it came with a 1047cc inline six-cylinder engine, making about 100 horsepower. And yep, I didn't stutter, I said that correctly. This bike came with an inline six-cylinder engine. The interesting thing was that besides its massive and insane engine, it was pretty standard. It's like if you put a V12 in a Ford Taurus. It made no sense whatsoever, but that's what made it so amazing. The CBX is one of my favorite bikes and I'd kill to own one one day. The fact that a manufacturer was so audacious as to produce a six-cylinder motorcycle is something that commands respect, but an important thing to note is that Honda was not the first one to produce a six-cylinder bike. That distinction goes to the 1972-1978 Benelli 750 Sei. However, because it did not sell as well as the Honda or rev as high, I chose to highlight the Honda instead, but it deserves an honorable mention in the sound check. <laughs> There's something magical about that old school carbureted sound coming from an inline six that revs over 10,000 RPM. It's a glorious engine configuration, and one that we'll probably never see again in modern motorcycles. Up next on our list is a true oddball. Number four, the steam-powered Black Pearl motorcycle from Revatu Customs. That's correct. It's a motorcycle powered by steam, the original fuel that powered our engines all around the world. This motorcycle is named the Black Pearl, and it was revealed at the Big Twin Bike Show in Rosmalin, Holland a few years back. The company Revatu built it basically on a whim, so no, it's not a production bike you can go and get. It's as close to a steam-powered train on two wheels as you can come to, with a mighty top speed of about five miles per hour. You're definitely not gonna be winning any stoplight drag races with this thing. But truly, it is both the spectacle, shock, and awe this mighty bike inspires that makes it charming. And in case you don't believe me, here's it actually running. Unfortunately, there's no specific figures on how much power, torque, or weight it carries, but does any of that matter when you have an onboard supply of coal and the ability to power your bike by steam? I don't think so. In case that wasn't wild enough, we've got you covered with our next bike. Number five, the PGM V8. You might be shocked to learn that there's not only a V8 motorcycle, but there's several V8 motorcycles that have been made throughout history. But most notably is this PGM V8, an absolutely ungodly combination of two R1 cylinder banks, making it a two liter monster. Let me give you some of the figures on this beast. 334 horsepower, over 150 foot pounds of torque, which confirms its face melting potential, all in a naked bike chassis weighing roughly 520 pounds, which it's not a light bike, but when you have that kind of go juice, does it really matter? And yes, it sounds as glorious as you would imagine. <laughs> The 
best part is if you're able to part with about $180,000, you can actually go and pick one of these up. God, I love the world we live in. There's so many interesting and bespoke features about this bike, it would be a disservice to try to cover them all in the midst of this video, so I suggest you go and read up about it on your own time. Common theme among these V8 bikes, they're all from Australia. Good on you, mate. I say Kawasaki H2, eat your heart out. This thing absolutely destroys its power output, even if it does cost about five times as much. The next bike on our list also seemingly has its engine from a four-wheeled variety instead of the two. Number six, the 1962 Road Dog. The Road Dog a true symbol of backyard mechanics, gumption, and persistence. The road dog resembles less a motorcycle and more a land-based whale. You literally cannot ride it at slow speeds and maneuver it. Seriously, you have to be moving at or above 15 miles per hour to steer the thing. Otherwise, you need to deploy two hydraulic arms to get it to stay still. Now, what engine powers this monstrosity, you might ask? Simple. <laughs> Chevy 153, which was a two liter inline four cylinder out of a car. And sometimes it was used on boats too, because why wouldn't you put a boat engine in a bike? It takes the phrase anchor to a whole new level. The road dog is a museum piece now, relegated to the halls of history. You knew there would be a common theme of car engines shoved into motorcycles when you clicked on a video that described the most unbelievable motorcycle engines, right? I mean, you must have known it would go down this way. And last but not least, probably my favorite old school engine, number seven, the Kawasaki H2 Mach 4. No, it's not that newfangled supercharged four cylinder H2 all the kids are clamoring about. No, no, this is the original Widowmaker. A sketchy UJM chassis made it to a fire breathing 750cc two stroke triple motor that made reviewers claim it was scarily fast, good looking, no holds bar motorcycling. By today's standards, it almost seems quaint. 750 cc's, not even 100 horsepower. What are you gonna do with that? But the way this bike made its power and how raw it was, that was the reason it was most respected and feared. The 750 cc triple has a scary howl. Take a listen. <laughs> And while there are plenty of triples today, there are no more two strokes, which made this engine's power delivery about as unpredictable as your girlfriend after you have a group hangout and you were making eyes at her friend. Is it gonna buck you off? Is it gonna make you sleep on the couch? No, the H2 is interested in one thing and one thing only, ripping your arms off from the wheelies it wants to constantly pull. The 750cc mill found in this bike was a gem and deserves respect, even if it is a crappy old UJM. And that about does it for today, boys. If you liked the vid, please be sure to remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date on all future posts. We're putting together two videos per week now along these Lister video essay styles and I'm trying to absolutely murder the motorcycle content game on YouTube. One million subscribers by 2020. We will get there. I'll catch you guys next time. See you later. Fact. In 1386, a pig in France was executed by public hanging for the murder of a child. Goodbye.